Apple have kicked off their WWDC 2020, which stands for Worldwide Developer Conference. And this is the opportunity for Apple to showcase to the world the software side of some of their most popular products. So we got a glimpse at iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, Mac OS and what I want to do in this video is give you like a summary of some of the highlights some of the standout features that certainly appeal to me from across their software announcements. Right guys we're going to start off by taking a look at iOS 14 because this was really teased to us in this keynote. To begin with we've had a couple of changes done to the user interface particularly on the home screen. So there are two real standout features worth mentioning here. The first is app library. This allows you if you've got multiple pages full of apps sometimes you know you might not necessarily use those pages or those apps for you to have them hidden and then the app library will then group them together either in alphabetical or in organizational sense for you to have access to them. Now I think this is a really cool feature because I for one have got pages and pages full of apps. Sometimes I need an app at the most furthest page and it takes me a while to get there. So I can see how this inclusion is certainly going to be more helpful with iOS. Now there's another feature which is something that we've been waiting for for a while and that is widgets finally on the home screen. And I like the way that Apple have included this, uh, something like widget stack that kind of changes throughout the day, makes it a much more dynamic experience of widgets on that home screen. Now, as well as this, we've got obviously the widget gallery that will allow us to customize and choose the right widgets that we wanna add on the home screen. But Apple have also included picture in picture as well, which is the ability to continue watching video uh, either on the home screen or within another app. I'm not a big fan of this per se because I, I tend to just watch my video either on YouTube or either within you know whatever app I'm watching it in. So this isn't a big deal for me, but I know for a lot of other people, it's certainly a welcomed addition. Now, as well as this, we also have a redesigned Siri. Redesigned Siri, which takes up much less space on the screen. And we also have a new app, and this is the Translate app. Now, I'm a big fan of this because here in the Middle East, there have been multiple occasions where I've needed to be able to translate something either in Arabic. My Arabic is incredibly rusty. Now, there's one other thing that I want to mention with iOS 14, and that is something called App Clips. App Clips is really interesting because it will allow you essentially to have a bite-sized version of an app when and where you need it. So think of the scenario when you're out and about, there might be an app for a particular product or service, you haven't got that downloaded, well, you'll be able to easily access the core element of that app, if you like, that will allow you to complete that transaction. And then later on, you can decide if you wanna keep that app or you know not deal with that app again. So it's almost like a bite-sized version of an app that you can use when is necessary. Next, let's talk about iPad OS because a lot of the things that were mentioned in iOS 14 will also be coming over to iPad OS, but there are a couple of standouts here. Number one, obviously we have widgets on the home screen, which again is I think gonna enhance particularly that larger screen real estate that we have on the iPad. Um, as well as that, we've got a slightly, I don't know, cleaner design within apps themselves. There's something called sidebar in the apps. I like this because I feel that over the last, I don't know, couple of months since I've been using the iPad, iPad OS, some of the apps look a little cluttered when it comes to menus and options. So this certainly makes a lot of sense and it actually helps the overall aesthetics. Now, another cool feature, and this is a big deal for me because I use my pencil a lot, is Scribble. This is the ability for iPad OS to actually recognize your handwriting and then allow you to essentially use the handwriting within apps, within uh, a situation where you might wanna write and then copy or use that text in some shape, way or form. I think this is a great, great feature. And it's really weird because this is such a feature that I kind of would have expected earlier on with iPadOS, but I'm really, really glad that this is finally coming. Next, let's talk about the Apple Watch because as an Apple Watch user, Watch OS 7 has given us some real teasers. One of them finally, which I'm happy to see coming, is sleep tracking. It's going to be interesting to see how this performs given the limitations of battery life on the Apple Watch, but nonetheless, I'm really keen on testing this out. And Apple did speak at some length at the keynote about some of the metrics and data they use to determine the sleep tracking. So again, it'll be good to put that to the test. Next, we also have customizable complications. 
and the ability to share some of those complications. So think of the scenario of, you know, seeing somebody else with an Apple Watch, either online, on Instagram or in person, and wanting to almost copy and paste that. That is now gonna be possible with the latest version of watchOS. Now, another final thing, particularly now, given everything that's taking place, is the ability for hand washing detection uh, within watchOS itself. Next, I wanna talk about the big deal here at the keynote, almost like the one last thing, and that is about the Mac platform. So to begin with, we got an update on Mac OS, essentially a new design with a new name. This is now referred to as Mac OS Big Sur. We've got new sounds, it's much more translucent, almost a hybrid look between an iPad OS and Mac OS, which might be polarizing to some, but to be honest, as someone that uses multiple Apple devices, I like to see the uniformity now being established. So I'm a big fan of this new styling and design. We also have Control Center, which is very similar in look and feel to iPad OS. We also get single view for notification and widgets as well, which is a welcome addition. But the big, big deal was Apple's public announcement now that the fact that over the next couple of years, they'll be dropping Intel as their main chips that power the Macs and moving over to their own, which is the Apple Silicon or the Apple chips. And this is a big, big deal because we've seen Apple Silicon be used in newer devices, Apple devices like the iPad, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, and the performance on those devices is absolutely incredible. We're talking better battery performance, better speed performance, and also lowering the costs as well. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple Silicon works. Having this fully officially announced is big, big news. So it'll be really important to see how this progresses. Right guys, let me know what you think about some of these software announcements from Apple. Anything that you're excited about, anything you would have liked to see slightly different, leave them in the comment section down below. Plus, if you're new around here, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like, and I'll see you in the next video very soon here on Mquan Reviews. Until then, I'm Mquan. Peace and blessings.